It's good when uh, God seems to move in ways you don't expect. It's always good. We're going to uh, just be turning our mind now to, to what God is doing in our communities and our marketplace. Emperor Julian, the, uh, the emperor of the Roman Empire, was not happy with his, with his temple priest. He, uh, he, he sent a letter. Julian was only, he was only emperor for about three years. You look at the dates, he was only about 31 when he died. 28 years old he came to this role as emperor. And within those three years he was not happy. He wrote a letter to his to his priests. <clears throat> he writes, the Hellen Hellenic region, that's a region, does not yet prosper as I desire and is the fault of those who profess it. For the worship of gods is on a splendid, magnificent scale, surpassing every prayer and every hope. This, you see, the state religion was suffering because of a group, you may have heard of them, Christians. He talking about Christians is their benevolence to strangers, that their help and their care for strangers, their care for the grave of the dead and the pretended holiness of their lives. Julian did not accept that this, they were fair income. I was just putting this on. The pretended holiness of lives that they've done most to increase atheism. You see, they thought Christians were atheists because, I mean, where is the idol that you worship? So they worship no God. And atheism, Christianity, is exploding because of the care that the Christians are showing. He says to his priest, now you've got to remember that the, the state supported the, the, the priests and the temples, and the temples were meant to pray to the gods for the priest, for the emperor. I believe that we ought really and truly to practice every one of these virtues. You know what he's saying? Do what the Christians are doing in caring for people. It's not enough for you alone to practice them, but so must all the priests in Galatia, without exception, either persuade, shame them or persuade them into righteousness or else remove them from their priestly roles. You got that idea? Tell the priests to act like what the Christians are doing or sack them. Get rid of them. Hey, not only them, but together with their wives, their children, their servants, admonish them that no priest may enter a theatre or drink in a tavern or, or control any craft or trade that is not that is base, that is unworthy, and not respectable. Honour those who obey, obey you. So who, whatever the priests do, like, honour them. But those who disobey, expel from office. In every city, establish frequent hostels in order that strangers may profit from our benevolence. So, so develop a hostel so when people come, you can actually give them care just like the Christians, okay? Just like the Christians. Um, he goes on, uh, for it is, it is disgraceful that when no Jew ever had to beg and the impious Galileans, you know who the impious Galileans are, when the Christians support not only their own poor, but also ours as well. All men see our people lack aid from us. Teach those in the Hellenistic faith to contribute to public service to this sort. Then let us not by allowing others to outdo us in good deeds. What, what did uh, Trudy talk about? This space was to encourage us to good works. So here's the, the Roman emperor saying to his priest, these people are out doing us in good works, and it's a disgrace. If I hear that you're carrying out these orders, I shall be filled with joy. 
This is, a, this is the boss writing to his worker. What was happening was that the, 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 the people of God, 300 years after Jesus, were expanding, growing, because they were actually showing care to those who were not even a part of the community. They were, sharing, they were showing care for those outside the community. And it got even to the emperor of Rome, who had to write a letter, this young guy, 31 years old he died at, he had to write a letter because things were out of control and people were becoming Christian because the Christians were showing love and care far beyond their own community. We as a church, we want such an impact in our community at Hawkesbury. Imagine that. The mayor of, of uh, Hawkesbury writing a letter to the public servants. You have those Hawkesbury Valley Baptist people are out doing the love that they're getting a bit of a name. We need to actually do something of what they're doing. Imagine the Prime Minister complaining of those Christians at Hawkesbury Valley Baptist. They're showing their love and care. <sighs> Amen, to Amen to that. 2023, we want kingdom impact like that. That's what we want. We want to... We dare to believe that this story that was started in the book of Acts that is, is being continually wrought, written about how the church of Christ is being expanded across the world. And a part of that, a special part of that for us, is the Hawkesbury Valley area region. We want to see God's people carrying God's presence and God's authority into God's world. God's people carrying God's presence and God's authority into God's world. Remember who God's people are. Here we are. Thank God we're not the only ones. There's others outside this room. But right now, we are talking. This is us. We want to carry God's presence. God's presence that... Uh, the Spirit of God dwells in us, so we, wherever we go, we carry God's presence. We want to see the, the people sent out with authority because Christ gives us our authority and we always have to remember who's God, whose world it is. This is God's world. God's people carrying God's presence with God's authority into God's world. And we've got superpowers. Our superpowers that we're, we want to... Practice, we want to strengthen, love, prayer, give and serve. These are our superpowers. This is the arsenal we've got. With, with these four things, God can have a huge impact in, uh, for the kingdom's sake in the Hawks Valley. We're looking about the, where do we take these four superpowers and apply them? It's in the four areas that you've had during this week. Amongst you and your relationship with Jesus, just like Trudy was encouraging us, if this is your only encounter with Jesus, you're starving to death. Honestly, you are dying. If me preaching to you is your only encounter to, with Jesus, you're starving yourself to death. We, we want to apply it in our family and friends, and they're the two we've already spoken about. Today we're talking about community and marketplace and spiritual home. These are the four areas. Let me tell you some ways that I've been hearing people applying this. Loving our know, devotion to Jesus. Focusing on enjoying God. Just finding joy in God in all things. In just a... Even I was talking to a woman yesterday, she was talking about even just finding joy in um, swimming in a pool and the refreshment that God has given this pool. Enjoying what God gives us. In our prayers, I have people praying for spiritual gifts. Imagine that. Have you, have you, have you, have you prayed for a spiritual gift that you might apply in, in your life that, that God may actually bring his glory? People praying for a hunger for Jesus. That's beautiful. Giving. Uh, people thinking about sponsoring another a child, a sponsored child. Or, or applying, or you know, giving some sort of regular giving. 
how do I give God even my, my desires like food? So fasting and serving. I've, you know, people have spoken, two people in the last couple of weeks have spoken about baptism. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Giving themselves to God. And family and friends, um, things like, uh, wor- like praying for difficult family members. Uh, praying for them, uh, not just praying for them, making the call and talking with them. Actually visiting them. I've heard, and, and giving, um, I've heard one person talking about how they're, they're going to try to start preparing meals for a family member who they're sort of estranged from, but they, they think that this may be a way of reaching them. Or visiting difficult family members, asking the question, how can I help you? How can I serve you? Even though it's, it's hard. I hope, I hope you're engaging in this process. You're thinking, how are you going to pray, love, give and serve in the area of your relationship with Jesus, in your area of relationship with your family and friends, and today, community and marketplace? Because what we're after is, the impact we're hoping for is first-time commitments to Jesus. We want to see the kingdom of God grow. We want to see baptisms, because that's a sign of people taking seriously Jesus and, and the call of Jesus upon their life, service, how we serve one another, and this is going to be a big one today, things like life groups, because we believe life groups is a wonderful way that you actually engage and, and learn about how do I live life in this world, in, in God's world, and discipleship relationships. And today we're talking about community I want to first focus on, because place matters, and we were designed for community. We were, this guy designed this way. The social networks, until recently, were defined geographically, weren't they? Our social networks were actually locations. And so God even created Adam and Eve, and he put them in a garden. But even when they, they were expelled, they were, they were just east of the garden. There's a location, there was a place. Do you remember Cain, the first murderer in the Bible? What was his part of his punishment was that he'd be a wanderer. He would not have a place. He would, he would not have a community. Think of Abraham, who was given, who was given the promise of a promised land, uh, the nation of Israel. Um, the exile was, was a part of the punishment when they were taken out of their space, out of their land. Place matters. And the final picture in the Revelation is that God... God brings heaven down to earth and there we dwell together with God in a place. We're going to have resurrected bodies. We're not going to be floating there up in the clouds playing, playing harps. Can't think of anything worse. We're going to be physical bodies new, on the new heavens and new earth. I think, I think this is where you know, we've often heard Indigenous people talk about um, have the connection with the land, and maybe us white people of us white people who buy and sell land quite easily, we've missed it. But I think it's there in the scriptures, because even even if uh, in the nation of Israel, when they carved up all amongst all the tribes, you could ne- you would never lose your land. You could actually sell your land, but after 50 years, the amazing thing was it'd go back to your family, because. Place matters. The Hawkesbury Valley matters to you people, doesn't it? It does matter. The area you come from, the area you make your home, your life, your community, that matters. When you die, really, our major calling, I think you all know that, like it's not here at the Hawkesbury Valley. It is in Blacktown. We have a... We have we, it's our main focus, and we delight in being here and a part of it, but um, one of the reasons why I can't be your long-term pastor is because I've got a calling somewhere else. But that's okay. If, where, where is the government complaining about these Christians doing too many good deeds? Historically, we've seen the wonder of the, the Christian heritage. You know, we have hospitals today because of this, 
of, of Julian's problem because Christians actually welcomed people firstly into their homes, then they walked them into to places and they became hospitals. Often monasteries were for the first, but hospitals are because of our Christian heritage. Things like schools. You know, schools come from a Christian heritage. You know, the, uh, in England, the, the bringing together of the Sunday school was really about teaching kids how to read and write because they wanted to read and write the Bible because there were so many kids who weren't educated. And in Australia today, we have SRE in schools today. In New South Wales, it's our legal right because of a, a relationship they had with the school, with the government back in the 1800s. And they took, they took the land, they took over the responsibility of the schools, but they promised the churches there would be religious instruction. And that's why today, in, this, in the world, I think it's the only place where in public schools we have a legal right to do scripture in schools. We, as a church, need to have a focus on how do we bless and have an impact upon our community. During the floods, we give our boat buildings, don't we? The, this place and, and, and Unit 13 are a, a part of, of the, uh, the, the flood uh, evacuation and, and the, uh, the they, we, use, they, we use our resources here for the good of the, the community. I want to, I've, I've asked Peter to come and talk a bit about the carols. The carols is one wonderful example of us having an impact, an impact on our community. It is, I would hate for us to make that the only one, okay? If that's the only one, that's going to be really sad. But this is certainly going to be one of them. So, Peter, would you kind of just give an update on the because this is how we serve our community. It's a part of our, what we've been calling the GDOs, our God Desired Outcomes. And, and Peter's going to just give us a bit of an update about the impact that we've had on the community with, through the carols. Thanks, Tony. Uh, for those people who are new to HVBC, I thought I'd just give you a, a brief history lesson um, and also from the kind invitation of Isla to say who I am and why I came to church. So my name's Peter Webb. And why I came to this church is because of the carols. Um, I was invited, I was a member of Rotary and we were doing the carols um, for Bridgewater. And when HVBC took it over in 2012, um, I met, came into the building to meet Rob McMaster for the first time. So that's how I came to, the, came to this church. Um, so 2012 were the first carols, so we've done 10, because we had one cancellation. So eight of those carols uh, have been a little bit of a joint venture with um, Richmond Anglican, and then we tried the street party one, remember, so we missed 2020. We did the 2021 one, uh, and then we had the storm coming down, and it was around in Red Bank. And then last year we uh, started off again, so that was our 10th one. And so... It was a challenge because there was some uncertainty about why. Why should we do it? And um, because we were coming out of COVID, we had Tony as a, our looking after, our nurturing us, and we didn't quite know whether it would all work. And so I think we've got some slides coming up. And so we've got, I've got three slides sitting there. We formed a, um, a bit of a committee um, and we come up with an idea. And we tried to reimagine, and so I guess the three main areas of reimagining was we took on community partners and um, we put some food trucks into the place and we created, uh, it's not quite a village green, but we created another area. And um, I'll just flick through these two, the next two slides. Um, I think this is one of the wonderful things about HVBC. We had three people on our executive, Phil Callaghan. Phil's not here, is he? No. And Jen, is Jen here? No. You are here, Jen? Yes, you are. <laughs> G'day. And, um, and we, we worked it out as an executive. Sorry, to just go back. So Rob was our first chair. I think he did it for three years. Steve, who was here last week? Is he here this week? No. no. 
So he, he took it over for, I think, three years. And then Lina, I think, probably took it over for three years. So I think that's how it all works out. So Joni um, went on social media and she put this um, quiz out there. And that's the facts and figures of about 120, 130 people who come back. So I'll just let you sort of pose all of those things down. Um, we were pretty much encouraged, bear in mind, this is an online quiz, so we were probably had an audience of people who do online data or were very keen to do that. But the thing that was, um, we were encouraged by was the age group and the big one about the kids. Um, because we wanted to, we took away the family focus in the free because we wanted to do carols for everyone, and, but we're still kids came and we had the two different areas. So we've got some challenges down the, the bottom, um, people saying what they would like to change and, and things like that, so it was 10 questions. And the next slide, please. There's some of the feedback, so I'll just let you read that. So we, uh, we didn't get any negative feedback. And that was just, uh, except for one negative feedback where some of the people were just a mildly smelly with a little bit of BO and could we have a sanitation tent to freshen them up. But apart from that... <laughs> so, um, the carols is completely funded outside church activities. And so this year's event, about $35,000 it cost us in, in money. And uh, we came in it with a little bit of a, a bank and we've just eaten into that a little bit by about four grand, and we're starting the, our next carols with about a 6K uh, balance. So that's pretty good. Um, the thing that came out of us, donations in kind, so that's, that's the hard money that we spent, but we probably spent, or people gave us another fifteen to $20,000 worth of value. Another thing that council, when you do your acquittals back, they want to know what's the community benefit or economic benefit. And so very roughly, it's about a $100,000 economic benefit is what we put the spend in the local communities around food and so forth. Um, we, um, we decided that we should do again and because we think it's core business for us um, and what we do. And so um, we've started to kick off, uh, had a, a fantastic chat uh, on Thursday, and I'd like to welcome Nicole. And um, so Nicole's going to join us, and we just had a, a random chat that went for about four hours, didn't we, Jen, at your place? And so I was uh, very encouraged for that chat, and we just talked about all sorts of stuff. So we're posing a question to everybody in the church. We're going to do it again. It seems a good thing to do. So what date? So we're going to pick the 23rd of December and we're going to try and find reasons why we would not have it on the 23rd. We know it's close to Christmas Day. It's the Saturday. But instead of asking what day should we on, have it on, we, we tossed it around the other way and say, why not? Why won't we have it on that? So that's an open discussion for everyone to have in the next one or two months and we'll sort of settle on that. I think the other, other thing that we, and it's, it's a shame Phil Callaghan is not here because the one consistent thing that's been over the 10 years is your husband Phil. And the passion he brings to it is just astonishing. And he just, he's there all the time and it just, he's just amazing. Totally, totally amazing what he does on that main stage. Just the vision he's got. So we picked up on give, serve and love. We picked up on the, com on the community partners. And I guess my big dream is that, you know, that we've, you've given our homework to do. I want to know that I would like to have everyone in the Hawkesbury will know and see the work of HVBC. Thank you. And I should mention that uh, the Give, Serve and Love, the Honey Carols effect, also sort of influenced us. Pray, love, give, serve. So it's all aligned. But as I said, if that's the only thing we do, I, that would be really disappointing. How do, we, how do we engage in the community in all different ways? And 
That's one of part of Peter's role will be to help us understand how to do that. Let me go to the marketplace and recognise that last yesterday there was a there was a uh, webinar here about about work. Let me just focus on a passage from two Peter three eleven. Peter says, since everything will be destroyed in this way, he's just been talking about how, how everything's going to be finished, um, the final judgment, what kind of people ought you to be? If you want to understand that, just go back and read 1 Peter 3, 1 to 10. But what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speeding its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in, in the heat. So this is refining happening in this future generation, future date. But in keeping with his promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, Make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Uh, again, I, I do like reading some of the history of the early church. And one of the reasons the, the growth of the early church happened was because the merchants were actually got more prosperous, the Christian merchants, because they were actually known to be fair. They were known to be trusted. And you and I know that we'd rather have someone we can trust so, rather than someone who will come with a cheap price. And the Christians there actually became to be known as being fair and good and godly. Now don't, we don't often use the words holy and godly, particularly in a workplace, but I, so I want to use the words uh, integrity and character. I want your integrity and character to be seen in your workplace. Integrity. It's always good to go to dictionaries, isn't it? The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. We don't act with integrity to, to find, um, to just to get God's love. We don't do that just to find that God could love us a bit more. We do that because God loves us and so we want to love others, so we want to do, live with integrity. We want to live with character. Character, the definition, the mental and moral qualities distinct to an individual. We want to live godly lives. So you guys who have businesses, you are fair. You don't cheat the people that you serve. Those of us who have a job, you've got to realise, don't you? You've got to live with integrity and character in that job. Because it's not just about getting paid. Because we all know that we, as we look at people and we see, each, we see the fellow workers, that we actually see, we know who the, who the people are with integrity and character. And we want to link that to being a follower of Jesus. That we don't cheat others, we don't cheat the employer, because we are followers of Jesus. God wants to have an impact kingdom impact on the people in your community and in your marketplace. God is working through you to do that. Can you just bear the weight of that for a moment? That's your responsibility. You represent Christ in your workplace. It doesn't matter where you are, you are the one who represents God. God is working through you through the Holy Spirit. And if that's true, if the Holy Spirit is working through you, what is going to be seen by others? I think there's only one thing that will be seen. One, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit will be evident in your workplace. And God willing, they'll be asking, why is this person... So forgiving, why is this person so diligent? Why does their character and integrity show shine forth? And it's because they follow Jesus. So next slide is going to uh, remind you that we, we are on a task here. 
you've seen this before, haven't you? But the only thing that changes is today is our community and workplace. We've done exactly the same thing with our, in, in, our intimacy with Jesus. We've done exactly the same thing with our family and friends. How are you going to bring love into your community or your workplace? I really do hope that you're actually starting to think these thoughts and actually writing something down. Make a commitment before God. What is the one big prayer that you're going to pray for your community? Peter's actually show, shared with us his one big prayer that, that the whole Hawkesbury would know of the work of Hawkesbury Valley Baptist through these community endeavours. What are you going to give of your time, priority and money to either your community or your workplace? Because that's the big bulk of our life, isn't it? That's a big chunk of our life. If you've got a full-time job, that's 40 plus hours a week probably when you include going and coming. How are you going to use that for the sake of the kingdom, not just so that you can get an income in? How can you serve with joyful submission into your community and workplace? Let's just pray. Father, it's been a... Oh Lord, we thank you that your presence has been here. I thank you, Lord, you've prompted Stephen to come and we could pray for him and to hear of his testimony. Lord, we thank you that for all those who have served this morning in making sure that uh, we could have a, a time together that is enriching, that is beneficial for all. But Lord, would you help us think into how can we have a greater impact into our community and our workplaces? Lord, I want to pray that your spirit would not leave us with any peace until we work out how we're going to do this. How am I going to do this? Lord, we're praying for those superpowers that only you can give, or that we might be show our love, our prayer, our giving and service. Lord, we pray that all these things through the, the work of the, your Spirit in us, the fruit of the Spirit, may all go to your glory, not ours, so that we might truly have this impact in our community. We'd be your people, you taking your presence with your authority into your world. Holy Father in heaven, we pray that you would receive all the glory and honour. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.